Hi, and welcome to the Fragrant Divide. In this video, I wanted to share three green scents that I've been sampling recently. First is Encelade by Marc Antoine Barwa. It's from the same company and same perfumer who created the now very famous Ganymede. And um, it's, uh, it's named after another heavenly body, just like Ganymede and um, the B61. Let me just say that Houston, I have a problem with this one. It's very, I mean, to me, it's just quite repulsive. So what does it smell like? So it opens with this very sick, sickly sweet um, uh, type of smell, um, actually quite reminiscent of uh, Baccarat Rouge 540. But I don't hate that as much as I hate this one. That sweetness, that sticky sweetness, that very aggressive sweetness, it's actually uh, one that I found more in Oud for Greatness than Baccarat Rouge 540. Yeah, it opens with that very sticky sweetness. It's very, very loud. Almost right off the bat, bat it, it kind of gives you this kind of earthy, uh, earthy, smoky, green vibe, right? Which would have been great, except there's that weird, very synthetic, you know, sticky sweet sweetness. And, and, and this is the kind where it actually makes my nose sweat. So I know that there's something in here that I just can't stand. And it's very, very loud. I, I can smell this from about at least five feet away. And from five feet away, it's actually making my nose sweat. So um, it's, it's, supposed to be, um, uh, it's supposed to be like inspired by like being beside a volcano or something like that. And you know, I can only imagine that scene from Jurassic Park where Chris Pratt is paralyzed and the lava is kind of like flowing down, you know, about to kill him. And basically that image is what this scent is like doing to my senses. It's basically killing it. So, and um, from what I can tell, the that earthy, um, sickly sweet green vibe. And it's not like a bright green. It's kind of like... If you, in terms of color, it's like green with a little bit, um, with a little bit of brown in it. So it's turning the, it, that kind of color, and um, it's supposed to be vetiver with rhubarb and musk and tonka. And I don't, I don't know what they do with this combinations, but that vetiver tonka combination is is just awful. I, I can barely even smell rhubarb at all. So it's very, very aggressive, uh, and and just downright repulsive to me. And I don't even really know what the deep dry down is like because I have to throw out the the testing strip that I was using because it was just so loud. I have to throw it out. I have to kind of like bury it under uh, you know some garbage in my garbage can just so it wouldn't project. And um, if if you like like strong loud fragrances and you're not bothered by that aggressiveness because it, it it there is a hint of screechiness but it's not. You know that's not the offensive, offensive part. It's it's really just really loud and really sweet, and it's it it does feel quite textured. So if you're if you're familiar with um, uh, Nui Bacalit by Naomi Goodser, or Etruscan Water by Francesca Bianchi, this is that type of strong. But those two other fragrances are not aggressive at all. Like they're they're kind of earthy and herbal and green too, but this one just takes you know the cake. And, and and not in a good way. So this is a, a definite no for me. And if we bring in Ganymede back into the picture, I what I ended up doing is I actually sort of like cleansed my senses by sniffing Ganymede. Because in comparison, Ganymede is just really, really like well done and classy. And I've, I've seen um, some reviews of this and it, it feels like it's like a... A rebellious reaction to Ganymede supposedly not having that that much projection and you know if projection is what you're looking for well you get it in Encelade. Next up is another Quentin Beach creation this time it's from L'Art de Saint Parfumé and it's um, Iris Degree. So Iris Degree is part of the, the um, La Potagère collection which is centered around vegetables and this one is centered around uh, the concept of uh, green peas 
I almost said P, like, you know, the bodily liquid. But but it's centered around green uh, peas. And uh, this opens up quite beautifully. Like when you um, when you first spray it, it's you, you feel that kind of very elegant um, and very green, like iris, almost powdery opening. And it has a little bit of a, a hint of citrus in there. So according to the notes, there's only three that they listed, which is um, galbanum, uh, green pea accord, and then iris. And it does have, it does give you uh, that feel of the of the powdered, like crushed powdered uh, green peas. It's not like the mushed one because, you know, it, that gives up a different kind of texture. But this one is more dry and like crushed and slightly powdery. So all of that combined, like it's in, in opening, it's very, very beautiful. But then as it as it goes on, it um, it sweetens up a little. So it's uh, while kind of like maintaining this, you know, green character, right? So, you know, it, it, this forms like a nice kind of like powdery green cloud around you. And, and I thought like, like, wow, this is really, really nice, right? But that, that tiny bit of sweetness, you know, because I'm actually kind of like sensitive to like sweetness. So, so a lot of like uh, unnecessary sweetness ruins perfumes for me so in here like I, I i'm kind of weary about it because it does get a little bit um sweet for my liking but the thing that ruins this for me is that when you get to the dry down while it does remain kind of like green you can totally tell th that there's a good amount of ambroxan in there so it just it just you know it, it just becomes again like quite aggressive i mean I mean, I, I think for some people, you know, they'll be able to tolerate it. But for me, somehow I've I've gotten quite sensitive to Ambroxan too. And, you know, even though it smells really, really nice and it projects off of your skin, you know, it, it gives you a good sillage and cloud around you. When it dries down and, and even though it's still projecting, that, that Ambroxan like really gets to you and that dry down, it's, it's, it, it just kills it for me. So the last the last green scent that I sampled is um, called Hora Hora de la Verdad Sombra by Senyoko. So I don't I don't know much about Senyoko. Um, uh, I didn't read really read up on them before I did this because I wanted this to be really quick. But anyway, Hora de la Ver Verdad um, Sombra means uh, you know, translated from Spanish means uh, hour of truth, and Sombra means shade. Or dark I think um, but uh, I think um, I don't know if um, as you can tell you know this sample is from indigo I actually uh, bought a sample set from indigo perfumery and this was a, a, a freebie that they threw in with my order and and uh, surprisingly I ended up really really liking this one um, so I don't know if they made a mistake but um, Hora, Hora, Hora de la Verdad has two versions there's a Sol and then a sombra. The sol means sun and, and sombra means shade. Um, but this one, even though it's labeled sombra, you know, it, which if it means shade, it, it would have been darker than the sol one, right? But, which means sun. Um, this one is really, really very sunny. Like it's bright. Um, it's, uh, it's basically very bright. It's green and kind of airy. Um, so when you, when you first spray it, like you can almost immediately smell the pink pepper and the geranium. So those are the two main things that 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 um, kind of like form the main uh, you know opening in mid and early dry down of the scent for me that I detect. So it's very very airy um, and it's it's a very beautiful and bright you know green. If pink pepper bothers you, don't worry. Like it doesn't really completely dominate. Um, after the first few minutes, so it's more like the green, you know, the greenness that you're left with, like um, from the geranium and, and maybe some galbanum in there. Uh, I have, I'd have to double check, but but yeah, it's very very nice. Um, it's actually very reminiscent of um, Rose and Queer by Frederick Mall, um, but that one is feels much more rosier and and greener. And this one, Hora de la Verdad, is much brighter. And, and kind of like airier in comparison. And then another one that kind of reminds me of this is um, 
uh, Lux Calma Volupta from Francesca Bianchi. So it's that realm of sense, and and it's it's gorgeous from start to finish. Um, my only my only uh, concern about this one is um, um, in the deep deep dry down. Like there seem there seems to be again like uh, uh, a type of oily sweetness, and this one has that it um, that sweetness is actually kind of reminiscent of um, something from Fleur, which I, I I cannot remember which one. Um, and also reminiscent of uh, um, Cedrat Boise from Mancera. Uh, but, but that appears in the very, very deep dry down. So um, I don't know if I should be, or, or anyone should be concerned about that. But um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's just so enjoyable. And I mean, I guess the only negative thing about it too is that it can, um, it can feel a bit mature. I mean, I guess like almost, almost anything that has geranium in it almost, you know, sometimes it automatically feels mature, you know, just because it's geranium. So maybe it's like a texture and a smell thing, right? But but here it's still it remains green and cold, but it doesn't go it, it doesn't go anywhere near the toothpaste tea uh, type of geranium. You know, there's no from what I can tell from my number, there's no mint in here, but it just feels very green and and airy and bright and. And you do feel um, a, a bit of sourness in there. And there's actually, um, this is the, um, uh, I tested this on skin. And on skin, you can actually smell the spices. So the spices, you know, they stay very close to the skin. So, you know, they're, they're like pretty like dry, kind of like, I believe it's kind of like, you know, VO leaning spices. But, but they stay very close to the skin while you smell the rest, you know, the the one that's projecting is the green and the airy bright part so 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 far like first few imp impressions and um uh, testing I, I really really like this one but because i already have you know chanel number 19 and um uh lux calma from francesca bianchi it might it might be a little bit redundant i mean they're not they're not the same or anything but it's the same style so you know the same style over and over again it's probably not a good in, in a collection, right? And I'm also I also really really like Rose and Queer. So and and I, I'm tempted to get that one because that one is much more wearable maybe than 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 or de la Verdad. But but still, it's it's really beautiful. I, I'm I'm it's it's quite intoxicating. I, like I couldn't stop smelling my um uh, my wrist when i sprayed it on on the, i mean my the back of my hand so so there you have it three green scents to check out this spring um if i had to rank these i mean it's very very obvious first i really love um Ora de la verdad and again i have to verify if this is really soul or sombra but so far i love it it's very uh nice and green and bright and airy and then again obviously i hate ancelot it's that's you know, I, I'm tempted to even throw this sample away, but but I'll probably keep it for reference right now. Um, and then I'm very very mixed with Iris Degree because um, as beautiful as that opening is, that that Ambroxan dry down. Uh, I wish they, I, I wish they would reform reformulate this and just I don't know, like just you know not let it project and stay beautiful and maybe you know just die off quickly, then stay on your skin and clothes for you know hours and hours and but, but you just get that ambroxan so if you reach this point thank you so much for watching